Well, I got that the stream is up, but I don't have my YouTube yet. Oh, there's my YouTubes. For some reason, it came in as Jax without the full name. We'll have to go back and edit that. The Jackrabbits will be the home team today as the higher seed. We'll get into that. A four, I think it's a 4-5 matchup right now. Oh, what happened there? I just had Team Reach crash on me. Who are we playing choice select? Sounds like the Jackrabbits will be taking the field. And we'll go through what our defensive setup is as we get going here in just a second. Trying to make sure everybody has the right, uh, has the right uh, URLs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the 10 a.m. game at the USSA Spring Kickoff uh, 13U AA. We are in the championship brackets, having earned a fourth seed yesterday. We went 2-0, but we gave up too many runs as compared to the first and second seeds. So uh, we will have uh, a fourth seed, and that puts us up against also 2-0 Choice Select. Um, However, they um, are the fifth seed um, because they ended up giving up even more runs uh, against than we did. So let me let me just check here what their what their record was. So they were two and zero, uh, but they gave, we averaged um, five point five runs against and a run differential of four point five. Choice Select gave up eight runs on average and had a run differential of six. So they end up with, a full, with the fifth seed. So the only real difference is we're home team. I guess we got to pick our own dugout and um, that allowed us also to hit home. Uh, we have Teddy on the mound who, as his dad, I can tell you this morning, he was a little more hyped up than usual. He's not one to show a ton of emotion, but was pretty jazzed. Uh, east side behind the plate, Joe at first, Ricardo at second, Jorge at Short and Gianni at third. In left, we've got Chris. In center, we've got Jack. And in right, we've got Javon. Beautiful throw from east side down to second to get that get this game started. Jack's wearing the black uniforms, highlighting the blue numbers against the black field. And a giant jackrabbit on each sleeve. Teddy will take the mound for the first pitch here against number one from Choice Select. First pitch is incoming. 57 right at the letters. So Teddy with the first pitch strike. Again, his goal to stay the uh, starter of the first game each day. First pitch strike. First batter out. 15 pitches or less per inning. That's what coach has said to all the pitchers. If you want to be, you want to be the ace of the staff. You want to be the guy I call on. That's what I want to see from you. First pitch strike. First guy out. 15 pitches or less per inning. So here comes Teddy, the second pitch of the at-bat. And that 58 mile an hour pitch is high. So Jackrabbits have played choice select in the past. If you were uh, 
Uh, if you're a Jackrabbits connoisseur, if you will, you'll know that we played them back in March. We were able to defeat them 8 to 4. 54 mile an hour looked like maybe a change up there. So Teddy now down 2 1 to number 1. Teddy with three, third uh, ball of the at bat here. Again, Teddy leading the team in innings pitched, 17. He's say, faced seven, 76 batters prior to this one and thrown 260 pitches for the season. Uh, and his base on balls are only 11. There it is, 56 right down the middle. 3 2. Uh, while his base on balls were 11, he did improve his strikeouts yesterday, adding a couple more to his 16 for a season total. And his ERA is 1.64. Here comes the payoff pitch. Teddy changing his grip. And that ball's popped up to Gianni. Gianni underneath it. And not able to come down with it in foul territory. So we'll see if that comes back to bite us in the bottom with uh, not catching that, that catchable foul ball there. Teddy's whip is 1.235. That's walks and hits per innings pitched. So it averages just a little over one person reaching base each inning he pitches. Ball high in the nose. Did, every, did everybody lose track of the count? No. That's ball four. Ball four. So I'm behind the plate lost track and the batter lost track, but every, every other grown up knew that was ball four. So Teddy will take his pitching arsenal to the next batter, number five from Choice Select. And we'll see if there's a run play on here, steal if you will. Isai with a good arm. Question is, is it accurate? Runners going. Got him by a mile. And Isai with an amazing throw there. An excellent tag from Ricardo out at second. So one down now, the, er, the walk is erased on that thrown out stealing. Ball outside, 48 miles an hour. I think that was Teddy's changeup. So Teddy's changeup is the one that he struggles to locate regularly. His, Curveball and fastball, he can hit his spots. The, the only question on the curve is, does it break enough? That ball is low. Ump with a really tight strike zone here. So we'll. First one a strike. I believe the first one was a strike. Yeah. Oh, someone just yelled 3-0 from that side. So let's see what we get here. And foul ball off to the right, and out of play. Have to be retrieved by one of the. Uh, Parents from Choice Select. 2-2. Two, two. All right, it's 2-2. Two, two, so Teddy will snap off a curveball here almost certainly. And let's see what number five does with it. Oh, no, it's a fastball, 58 outside. So, again, a really tight strike zone uh, called outside. I am, to, uh, your press booth is to the left. So of the home plate, I'm kind of behind the right-hand batter's box. So I can't really necessarily see the plate as well as I usually would. That ball down to the dirt. Excellent stop by Isai. So we'll do it all again. Teddy was facing two batters and two base on balls. Bailed out by his catcher the last time up. And let's see if they feel like, uh, Troy Select feels like running again on Isai. The best thing Teddy can do here for Isai is to give him a very clear uh, fastball with a lot of heat on it that he can do something with. And Teddy will step off as we're still waiting for the uh, signs. Number 11 doing a little gardening there. Right foot in the box now. Teddy with foot on the rubber. Teddy with a throw over to first. And no play over there. But does keep him on. I like seeing that. Yesterday all Jackrabbits uh, pitchers were ignoring the runners completely. So just a little bit of a I see you to give that runner a second thought before he takes too big of a lead. It does not go. That ball is high above big tall number 11's head. So 
So Teddy floated that one in now. Now he's behind. That ball's popped up straight out of the way behind. And that will go almost exactly where the last foul ball did. So Eastside already sweating buckets back there. It is a beautiful day in your Mile High City. About 74, I think, at first pitch. We may get as high as 80 today. I believe it's the first time all calendar year we've hit the 80 mark here in Denver. Keith and I did put on our, our sunscreen before uh, we got out here today, so no need to worry about us. We're not gonna fry. Jackrabbits play this 10 a.m. game. Then should they win, we will have the noon hour off and we'll be back on at two. But that gets way ahead of ourselves. We need to get out of the top of the first here. Oh, ball outside. Wow, I'm not sure exactly where the strike zone is for this, this guy. So for the Jackrabbits, when we're up, we gotta just make sure we are uh, being as, I mean, just taking. So next pitch, runner does not go. Ball up. Wow, so this uh, I'm calling kind of a professional level strike zone because that was a strike yesterday at the letters. So Teddy really laboring under all three batters he's seen. 3-1. And he throws that ball in the dirt. And everybody's going to move up 80 feet on another base on balls. So as I mentioned, Teddy a little hyped. We got a timeout here. Coach Hunter's going to come say hello. Uh, Teddy was a, l a little hyped at the uh, this morning. And so I'm a little, uh, little worried that he might be uh, something going on here. And coach, coach giving him some very clear instructions, I think about arm and release point, really talking about where that ball was coming out of his hand. So. And number eight steps in, number eight swinging the hype fire. Puberty has already kicked in for this young man. He's quite tall. There's a strike at 58 right at the letters. So Teddy's now got to uh, make sure that he doesn't give number eight anything else to hit. Eight, number eight looked like he was taken all the way there. He, that way up, let's see when he loads, if he brings it down. He does not, 56 in the dirt. So number eight with the high uh, kind of bat up way above his head as he's getting ready for the pitch means he's got to bring that bat a long way to make contact. Swing and a miss at a 54 mile an hour changeup right there. That was beautiful. So whatever Coach Hunter told Teddy seems to be making a difference here. Two strikes. I believe it's our first two strike count to the uh, anybody. And a, a curve there I think at 52. Goes onto the other field on a foul ball. Thankfully no one's playing over there. We're the 13U championship bracket, the 14U championship bracket playing behind us, so you'll hear them all day. They are pitching from a mound while we're pitching from flat. They're also got 60 feet and 90 feet. And a weird ground ball to first. Joe will step on the base and get the out. Simple out, two down. Runners do advance to third and to second. And Teddy will now, he's put his foot back on the rubber. He should step off so he doesn't get a silly balk. Oh, now his foot's on the rubber. Apologies, he was right in front of it. Second and third, two down, number 37 up. Choked way up on his Marucci bat. So I don't know if the choice select player is gonna come back and uh, See, watch his at bat, but because his, his bat was so high, he was late on that, hit that ball to first base. So, a slight tweak to his stance could really. There it is, 55 on the inside. So, 37 now, facing a 1 1 count with two down. And we've got a little bit of a Teddy fan club to my right. That ball is corked into right center field. Jack jumps and does not make it. That ball is going to go nearly all the way to the fence. We should have a play at third, no, play at seconds. 
and slides in safely. So with a double to clear the bases, Jack Rabbits give up two, both of which were based on balls. And that's the first hard hit pitch all day from Choice Select. So a couple of the uh, Pueblo Premier players who won their 8 a.m. game sitting on the bench to the right of me, a little bit of a Teddy fan club cheering for him, which I like to hear. Very proud Papa to hear other people yell my kid's name and yelling, come on. So a huge hole on the right, Ricardo holding the runner at second on, but Teddy get paying no attention to second, trying to get this third out of the inning. Beautiful 51 change up to start off. Now, Teddy needs to pop in now with a pretty high 58 mile an hour fastball here to really change the speeds. See if we can't get number 13 in a hole here. And a bunt. 52, I don't know what that was, maybe a curve. Um, but 13, showing the bunt there, didn't go for it and took strike two. So now 13 to hold, Teddy really in the driver's seat. At a 51 to 52 mile an hour pitch, I'd love to see him come back and throw a nice 58 mile an hour fastball here. And he does, and it fouls off. Hats. Whoa! <laughs> we almost hit a uh, warm up player on the other field. And they nicely return the ball back to us. So Teddy now had the pitch he wanted there. 13 did a really good job of fouling that off. Runner at second with a big lead, looking like he's gonna go. He does not. And a ground ball to third base, to first base. They got him by a step. Beautiful play by our defense there. So we get burned on a couple of base on balls and at the bottom, go to the bottom of the first down, two runs already. The lineup, we're only going to bat 10 today, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but Joe Jorge Gianni will, will be guaranteed up, then Teddy, Aaron, Ricardo, when those gentlemen get on. All right, we're back with Joe up at the bottom of the second, or sorry, bottom of the first, excuse me, down in a hole, two runs. So Joe's got to do what Joe's got to do, which is get on base here. Didn't see if he did his fist bump with blue and with catcher, but I would guess he did. He always does. And on this Sunday morning, checking in with the man above. Here comes the pitch. And that ball is 58 at the knees. Not sure Teddy got that call, but let's see what we get here. And Joe now being told to crush it. Whoa! The strike zone has changed dramatically between the top of the first and the bottom of the first. So now we're down two strikes to Joe. And 
Next pitch. And that ball is in the dirt. 56. So this pitcher throwing about as hard as Teddy. And the Jack Rabbit spent a lot of time working on the two-strike approach. We talked about that a lot last, this last weekend, but it's really paid off. Putting the bat on the ball, making sure we make them make a defensive play and not taking strike three. Swing and a miss, 62 at the numbers. Really well-placed pitch by number 11. So Jorge is up. Swing in the hype fire. We have a pretty deep backstop. It does have a lot of uh, wood timbers on it, so the ball's going to bounce around. But Strachi, oh come! Oh, that's a strike. Oh man, I am not. I am so confused about this strike. So uh, Jorge down a strike. And next pitch. Jorge fouls that off, 60 mile an hour pitch onto the other field. So Jorge down now, two strikes. Jorge asking for time, get himself in there, legs extra wide on two strikes, fast hands to the ball. That ball's inside, almost took Jorge's in the hip. Jorge now ready for the one-two pitch. See if they come back inside. They don't, outside pitch. Jorge, big fast swing. Outfield shaded way to the right. Right fielder very much down the line. Center fielder off center into the right center gap and left fielder in the left center gap. So an assumption here that nobody can pull on number 11. Number 11 shaking off his catcher. Let's see what we get here. Jorge reaches out and grabs that ball, knocks it away. So with that two-strike approach, you can see he's got just quick hands to the ball and fouling off and making number 11 pitch this, pitch this, uh, th throw extra pitches. Catcher set up inside now. Oh, Jorge with a f just <laughs> scorcher off the bat down the right field line, almost, uh, I don't know. They almost took out the choice select coaches who were sitting on a bucket just outside the fence. Calls of Jorge Jorge for our man at bat. And that ball bounces in the dirt, bounces all the way back to the screen. And we have a 2 2 count. Keith, of course, keeping track of the scoreboard, knowing exactly that I needed to know what the score or the count was. Yeah. <laughs> so Jorge now with a really good at bat. Now the key is to get on. Huge hole up the middle with the right, uh, second baseman shaded to his left, our right. And Jorge hit by pitch. Jorge hit by pitch. He will take that off the thigh, rub some dirt on it, and get himself ready to steal. So it's a left-handed pitcher, so we'll see if the steal sign is on. Gianni steps in, Teddy on deck. <laughs> Number 19 with the bat on his shoulder. Now he's ready, ready for the pitch here. 63 right down. Colfax, Johnny not able to catch up with that one. So 63, uh, so uh, 63 miles an hour. I think the fastest we've seen for a strike from this pitcher. So not losing any speed off the windup. And Jorge is back, and he's safe. What we could use here is a nice pass ball. I think the the backstop is far enough away that any pass ball will be uh, free 80 feet between first and second, and probably second and third, but close enough that it may um, may call into question whether you would come home on a pass ball. But high pollen count here in the Denver area, and one of the Pueblo Premier uh, players sneezing a bunch. Jorge goes, and that ball is in the dirt, and no throw. So beautiful decision by uh, Jorge to wait there for a few 
Gianni now with runner in scoring position with a one ball, two strike count and one down. Jorge with a huge lead. I mean, he's probably got a 20 foot lead. And he's back, way to pay attention. Jorge getting in the head of the pitcher now, making him think, because he's got a giant lead. So the, the general rule of thumb is you get off as far as the second baseman uh, or the shortstop, whoever's closer. Jorge feeling it. And a foul ball straight back into the fence. Gianni on, on him now. He's seeing it. Again, two strike approach. Working out well here for the Jackrabbits with a lot of foul balls, a lot of extra pitches being required of our opponents. Gianni ready. And a ground ball up the middle. Through into center field. It looks like Jorge is definitely gonna score on a very big, big single for Gianni. There we go. So Teddy now steps in, and that'll put Aaron in the on-deck circle. And that ball uh, gets away from the first baseman, but you can't see that. So uh, gets away, but a, a sh pretty short fence there. And Gianni de do dove back. So. And Teddy with a reach and a foul ball. First pitch fouled off for strike one. So Jack Rapp is doing a good job of making number 11 throw a lot of pitches here. And Teddy just absolutely uncorks on that ball. Oh, it's dropped, it's dropped, it's dropped. We'll get the runner in a second. Oh my goodness, so great play by the left fielder who then drops the ball. He's got a, uh, he's really feeling real bad. I hate to see that because he had that played well. So Teddy absolutely popped that ball. It would have been a line drive to the, into the fence. It's 275 here today. Uh, so shorter field than we had um, yesterday at 300 where the boys put a lot of balls up against the fence. So that was a very fortunate error for the Jackrabbits, giving us first and second with hot hitting Aaron in. And Aaron hits a ground ball down, down the third base line. So we got, we got no out, or what happened there? We got, so Aaron out at first, but uh, Gianni was safe at third. So effectively like a bunt does give us two outs now and the runners at second and third so pretty key for Ricardo to get a um, hit here to put us ahead big hole on the right side now never mind second baseman scooching back 62 for the strike so with two down the runner should be running on contact Ricardo needs to keep his head in when he keeps his head in he, he just crushes this ball when he doesn't, he misses the ball by a mile, and that's what struggled early. Yesterday, he seemed to, to pop out of his slump. And he just hit, get underneath there. Two to, and the left fielder does come down with that for the third out of the inning. So, no harm from the dropped ball from Teddy, but the boys putting a lot of aluminum on these and absolutely um, keeping it Keeping it real here. So kind of a quick check in with the Choice Select team by their coaches here on the first base side. And the Jackrabbits will take the field. Teddy will be back. I'm gonna go find out about innings and pitches and things for uh, everybody.
And from what I can tell, it sounds like uh, six innings per tournament, from what the coaches understand. Potentially seven if you make the championship. So Teddy had three yesterday, one already this inning, or this game. So that's up to four. So Teddy will be back on the mound. Isai behind the plate. Joe at first. Ricardo at second. Jorge at short. And Gianni anchoring the hot corner. In left, we have Chris. In center, we have Jack. And in right, we have Javon. So on the Sundays, you have three options for, you can bat nine, 10, or your entire team. Uh, coach has chosen to bat 10, so that's gonna be your 10 position players plus a designated hitter. The other players, the other three players on our bench will be substituted in both for hitting and for pitching. Um, an original player can be subbed out once and subbed back in, and then the substitute can only come in or go out uh, one time. So we'll see what happens here with some of our defensive and offensive changes. So Teddy now facing number two from Choice Select to start off the top of the second. Now 57 mile an hour pitch is outside. Let's see if the strike zone expands like it did in the bottom of the second, or bottom of the first, here at the top of the second. Foul ball. 57 again on the outside corner. Went off the ump there. Questions for the ump if he's all right. He uh, gives a thumbs up to our bleachers. So a 1-1 one, one count now. Number two, quite a ways up on the plate. So if Teddy can throw the ball inside where Eastside's calling for it, number two will be probably pretty flummoxed. Oh, okay, that ball was a low one away. So Teddy with three straight fastballs here. Let's see if he brings something else or if he's just gonna rely on the fastball until he gets the first out. Ball at 57. Not sure what, what we're missing here. Maybe a little low. And the ball's hit straight up. Isai underneath it. Isai pushes Blue out of the way. And Isai comes down with it. You can't see it out of the way, but Isai comes down with it. Booyah! Great play. Isai getting lots of cheers from the crowd, including yours truly, for that really good defensive play. So first batter out. Didn't get the first strike, but got the first batter out. So still trying to put all the pieces together. The, the role of ace still up for grabs. Teddy throws a 56 mile an hour pitch that's over the top. Next pitch. Strike at the letters. Isai doing a little of uh, helping clean off the plate for the umpire there. I think umpire ironically or unironically wiped his foot over the base after he cleaned it off. So the base is no cleaner than when we started. Isai trying to help his pitcher out by making sure the plate is fully visible. Next pitch. 57 high, didn't swing. Isai does appeal, no swing. One, two, one, two, one. That ball is way up high, 57. So Teddy not alternating his pitches at all, just throwing, just throwing hard here to the which should be the bottom of the order, I believe. I think this might be the bottom because I see, I think the leadoff hitter in the on-deck circle. So really key that Teddy gets this out here on a 3-1 count, just needs to groove one right down Colfax. Oh, and Teddy throws that one way too high. So Teddy's mechanics way off this morning. Yeah, coach agreeing that his mechanics are off, suggesting that he's releasing the ball too high and not getting his chest down. So number 29, I don't know if 29 was the leadoff. I thought it was two was the leadoff. So we'll see what happens here. Teddy now, a little bit of a bind again, another base on balls. No play over there. In fact, coach 
suggesting that the runner on first could take another step. Let's see if Teddy goes back over a second time. He does not, runner does not go. 57 right down the middle. 29 didn't look ready to pull the trigger on that one. So first pitch strike, key, got to get that first pitch strike. That ball is low and away. Man, I am so confused about what this ump needs. Gotcha. He needs um, glasses. <laughs> well, I just wish he was consistent, so. All right, 29 now, seeing the pitch. And he pops that ball straight up to the right side. Ricardo underneath it. Oh, Ricardo maybe a little bit fancier of a catch than we would have liked. I don't know why they do that. There's no, there's no points for uh, acrobatic catches there. They just need to catch it. But two down now as we go uh, to the catcher who just knock, throwing off his armaments there in the on-deck circle. Number four will step in. So two down. So Teddy working through some of his mechanical issues this morning. Let's see what he does here to number four. I'd like to see him start with a maybe a change up or something. Number four it should be sitting fastball. And the next pitch, sorry, the first pitch is a 55 mile an hour ball right at the knees. I don't know what that was. It's too fast for a changeup. Didn't have much of a break. So let's see if the runner's going here. He is not. Beautiful 52 mile an hour curve. And Teddy now with an 0-2 count. Let's see if he can just finish off number four here and get us back in the dugout, put some helmets on. Change up, strike three! There it is, the first strike out of the game for Teddy. And that ends the inning, one man left on base, no runs across, the chance for the Jackrabbits to tie it up and take the lead now. We have a real good chance to win this inning after losing first inning. Let's see how we do against Choice Select. Again, we played them back March 2-1, Choice Select. Uh, we played them back in March and were able to defeat them 8-4. to four. Looking back at the box score, we were down uh, three nothing, I think. Then scored eight in one inning, and ended up coming back and winning eight four. So the uh, little bit of history here between the teams, a tiny bit of history. It was also Choice Select's first game of the year. It looked like so you can hardly hold that against them. Uh, by now they've played, I believe this is their eighth game. So a different, uh, you know, a different team has had a bunch of games under their belt. Number eleven will be back on the mound, firing BBs. And that was ball, uh, balls in, balls down. Javon, Chris, Isai, and Jack will all bat to flip the uh, lineup over when they get on. All right, Papa, thanks for your notes. I will give that to Teddy here when I can about the lack of a leg kick. So from the windup, number 11 will be thrown to Javon. Javon already takes that ball way inside, 61. So what I've noticed about number 11 is if he stays in the upper 50s, he is right around the plate, and the ump likes those. If he hits 60 or above, um, his his accuracy changes. Although he has thrown a couple of 60, what, three mile an hour fastballs down the middle, so it's not a guarantee that speed equals decrease in accuracy. Next pitch, 58. 
and Javon swinging for the fences there. There was all kinds of things that went wrong. Pulled his head, arms leading, no hip turn. So let's never have that swing again. Let's see what the next pitch is. That ball is inside. Javon does a very good job of selling it. I like that. Makes his, you know, makes a big body motion to ensure that the ump knows that ball is inside. Next pitch. Wow, 61 right there. Right there. So Jackrabbits really need to get the first guy on. 2-2 two, two count. There's no good to, to sort of spot your opponent one out before you even get started. And Javon with a good swing at a 61 mile an hour pitch at the letters. Fouls it off. Again, two strike approach leading to more pitches from the opponent's pitcher. And I don't believe there's a pitch count limit, but it does. Ball's inside because Javon sells it. Because Javon sells that pitch. Look at him move out of the way. Full count now, full count. Javon will be taking that ball outside. What a good at bat. What a high quality at bat right there. HQB. So gets on with a little help from his friends there and a base on ball. Whoops, I forgot I left the picture in a picture in. My bad. Chris will step in now. So with a left, left handed batter, uh, or less, sorry, left handed pitcher, looks like we don't have the steal on necessarily. Javon, one of the fastest, most athletic kids on the team, but you don't want to get him picked off if you don't. And that ball gets away. Javon is going to be uh, pop up, but not pop up enough time. So that's the second overthrow from the pitcher to first base. And Jackrabbits definitely need to be ready for that so they pop back up and go as more likely how we will end up on second base Chris showing bunt and we get a safe no tag no tag so good throw but the tag didn't happen so uh, Javon on second but a strike on the miss bunt attempt And the uh, coach would like to have a conversation here about what that was. And from here, it was pretty clear that the ball sailed to the right field side and Javon was already past it before the ball came in. All right, and that was the explanation. We're all good, thumbs up, back pats, everything from everybody. And it's a kid's game, so, you know, let's not get too wound up. Now, Chris, the big wide stance already starting with the two-step approach or two-strike approach, which has served him well. He's hitting a lot better this uh, season than he was in fall ball, and it's because he shortened up his uh, his swing. So you can see Javon out there at second, and he's taking a lead, being conscientious of how far second base is from him. He can get back in time. Swing and a miss, and that's strike three for Chris. So one down. Good pitch by 60. It looked like that, uh, sorry, good pitch by 11 on a 60 mile an hour pitch. Looked like it sort of dove there. So Esai now, up to bat. Come on, Esai, you got it. And Javon will scamper back. Yeah, the pitcher was on the rubber, so Javon went in and took his lead, even though Esai was not in the box. Esai with a swing and a miss at 58 mile an hour pitch. Esai is phenomenal behind the plate and struggled in the batter's box this year, this season. Early game still, but uh, not drawing the walks, not getting the, the hits. Let's see if that can change here. Ooh, good stop by the catcher there. Not let that ball get passed on a something that got away. Sign-ups? Yeah. No, we're live streaming this. Yeah. So, all right, here we go. We got number 16 in the box with a count to go. Oh, there's a ground ball to the left side. And go, Javon. Go, Javon. Javon better get down. And it's cut. Throw to first. No throw to first. Tie ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent baseball. 
Excellent baseball by the Jackrabbits. And Esai with a key hit there. Key hit through the left side that will score the runner from second. An excellent hustle. So Javon's high quality at bat leads to a base on balls, leads to a stolen base, leads to a timely hit from Esai. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie ball game in the bottom of the second. So now we've got Jack up, lefty on lefty here. We'll see, Jack had some a key double yesterday and two big moon shots out to right field in our second game. And this is a different pitcher, a different field, and a different day. So let's see what we get. Wow, that was a nice throw. And uh, with 12-year-olds, you never know what you're gonna get. It's not like they're professionals and repeat their behavior over and over and over again. So we'll see where Jack's at. Jack loaded, and he cranks that ball in the center field, in the left center field. Center fielder does grab it and comes down with the ball. And that was a beautiful swing from Jack. Just the outfielder was there as that ball hung up in the outfield. So two down. Two down, 2-2, two, two, and Joe will be up. Joe struck out his first time up at the top of the lineup on a very liberal strike zone. So we'll see if Joe is able to get the bat on the ball this time. Already choking up, so knowing that he needs to uh, probably swing a little bit quicker on this pitcher who's in the upper 50s and lower 60s. And that ball is high and away at 61. I got sunscreen all over. Thank you, Darcy. From, I can hear Sarah from all the way back in Denver thanking you for asking. And Joe with a shot to the left side. That ball weirdly hits the, the turf and goes straight up in the air. There's a big lip there right behind third base. So Joe, Joe with a key hit to keep the inning going. First and second, two down, and Jorge is up. And the Jackrabbit's putting great aluminum on the, bat, on the ball here. Bring him home, Jorge. So, Jorge taking the helmet off and checking on the hair. We have the high volume hair club here. A lot, so many boys on the Jackrabbits with a, a lot of pop, a lot of fluff on their hair. Isai with a big lead on second. And Jorge will pop that ball up. Two shortstop, there's two down. And second baseman underneath, or sorry, shortstop underneath it with the catch and the end of the inning. But the Jackrabbits do win that inning by putting another run on the board to tie it 2-2. So we go to the top of the third, all tied up. And I'm gonna see, and two more left on base. Yeah, good, Keith with a good point there. We got, got quite a bit, of, another powwow with choice select here before they come up to bat in the top of the third. But Jackrabbits continuing to leave runners on base. Uh, but not for a lack of putting the bat on the ball. I mean, we've only seen, I think, uh, one one strikeout looking. And let's see what our defensive alignment is here. Well, there's Jack Rabbit slow to take the field, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna wait a second until we're all out.
And I've been on mute for a while. Sorry about that. And three balls, two strikes. So just to review maybe what you missed, um, Teddy can go seven innings. This is his sixth for the weekend. And he has a 3-2 count here. And we're at the bottom of the order. Oh, that's a strike! That ball was inside, apparently, to the left-hander. Um, so the runner will take first. And Teddy just the recipient of a really tight strike zone. Um, shared with... Shared with uh, Teddy the his leg kick not coming up high enough here, and number one steps in with a very unique uh, batting stance, and number one has the uh, face guard as well. Oh, number one was the first batter. Okay, so there we go. I thought it was anyway. It doesn't matter. You got to get them all out. Ball is high on a changeup. the runner on first now and there it is a one two yes. count so Teddy with a base on balls the first batter those always come back and haunt him and haunt really every pitcher that's what happened in the first inning two base on balls came back to score which were the only runs for the choice select to this point So not sure how coach is going to use Teddy, if he's going to pitch this inning and then be done, or if he's going to get a full four innings today and just be done for the, for the tournament. And that ball has popped up to the right side. Joe underneath it. Joe with the grab, and he's out. The runner on first comes back to the base, so no play for the double play. And one down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure five was the leadoff hitter. Yeah. Hey Chuck, is five the leadoff hitter? Is Chuck is five the number one hitter? The last kid was. Oh, the number one was the, okay. My bad, Keith. I apologize. <laughs> Keith's running the court scoreboard. Keith's paying more attention than I am apparently. So we got uh, we walked the bottom of the order. We got the leadoff hitter to pop up to Joe at first, and that ball is way up high. Kieran with an acrobatic catch to keep it from going nowhere. So not sure if Teddy's feeling fatigue on his arm or what. Well, but really not had the mechanics today, which was weird because I thought he was locked in this morning. 55 right at the knees. So yeah, little little speed coming off the fastball. Someone suggested he hits him with the Fortnite, and there's a little smile from the mound. Foul ball! Foul ball, strike two. So number five didn't get out of the way, and that ball goes off the back of his of his bat and well the baseball gods were looking down on Teddy on that one because he didn't deserve that uh, curveball that didn't curve to be a strike but he got it fastball coming swing and a miss at that high heat 57 so much like the pros now very popular move is to get two strikes and then uh, for the you to come in with the high heat which they did there so number 11 that's the pitcher he makes a little, look like a little cross on the ground. Gets the sign, two down. Teddy ready, number 11 not, now he is. So he pitches left, but bats right. That is very uncommon. And that ball gets away. And the runner will take second with no throw. Again, the far enough, the back's out far enough away that any ball that gets away is gonna be a free 80 feet to second and probably to third. Not clear that it will be to home though, because it's uh, much closer than where we've had some in the past. And that ball is corked into left center, into center field. Jack underneath it, he takes a knee for unclear reasons. And Jack Rabbits are out of the inning. One left on base, no run score. Jack Rabbits go to the bottom of the third with the at bat uh, ready to go. So Teddy getting a check in with coach. And here's who we'll have up, we will have Oh, I can't see. Gianni, Teddy, Aaron, Ricardo. When those gentlemen get on, Javon, Chris, Isai, and Jack will all bat, barring a substitution. So, for example, Isai 
was subbed for Kieran, so potential when that spot in the order comes up, Kieran will bat. We shall see. But for now, um, we that's what we're going to go with. So certainly Gianni, Teddy, and Aaron. There's going to be no change there. Aaron must be the DH today because Aaron's not playing defensively. So uh, Aaron, it's funny. I think when Aaron comes up, it says his his uh, position is utility. So filling in in every role in every spot. Uh, so when he's got his little thumbnail there. New pitcher for Choice Select, who just buried a pitch at 69 miles an hour in the dirt. Uh, so we'll see if that was an accurate reading or not. Number eight, right-hander. And he buries another 68 mile an hour pitch in the dirt. And this pitcher is throwing quite hard, but struggling to find the zone. Um, nine straight pitches, uh, warm-up pitches that look like it would not have been a strike. So we'll see if our boys have the patience to take here. And Gianni will step in. Gianni, big hitting Gianni, can put a massive charge into a pitch. And so here we go. Top, or sorry, bottom of the third. Hugely important inning for us to win and get ahead. Uh, I just got intel that Teddy will be back on the mound in the fourth. It'll be his final inning. And there's a 70 mile an hour pitch at the knees. Uh, that was a, has been a ball to Teddy many times. And the pitch to Gianni comes from the windup and is in the dirt, bounces off pitcher, or sorry, not pitcher, catcher and maybe ump. So our boys just need to be patient up there, I think. And Gianni will receive the third pitch of his at bat right now. That ball is in the dirt. This could be a very long inning if we, oh, we had a timeout on the field there for some of the, oh, the first baseman was changing out his gloves. So he's got a first baseman's glove. 69 pop of the mitt. 69. 69 from 54 feet away is fast. So Gianni now got a little gardening to do, stretching his feet out. Swing and a miss at a 71 mile an hour pitch right down the middle but couldn't catch up with it tip of the cap to the pitcher number eight for a really well thrown at bat there teddy in now number four hitter on in the lineup next pitch or first pitch excuse me is a strike apparently And number seven, ready for his pitch. He takes that ball in the dirt and gets away. <sighs> 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 
butterflies in my stomach big time. Beautiful pitch right down the middle. Teddy just spits on it. 70 miles an hour. So Aaron in the on-deck circle, he's got the donut on, help kind of generate a little extra timing here. And that ball bounces further away. So again, the right fielder shading way to the right, center fielder playing straight away, and left fielder playing in left center. So a very unique outfield lineup. And Teddy pops that 70 mile an hour pitch away. Teddy swinging the high fire. He does like the feel of it in his hand. He's tried multiple bats this year, and his dad, yours truly, will refuse to buy him a bat until he likes one. Although we're not buying the high fire since it's likely to get banned here soon for being too juiced. Next pitch. Teddy swings a fastball, 71 in his eyes, and pops that ball straight back. It goes on to the other field, so be a little bad for choice select. They have to go retrieve all those balls that go on the other field. So they have kind of a full-time foul ball retriever almost. That ball's low and away and gets away from the catcher. We have a full count now, Teddy with a full count. Teddy has seen seven pitches here already, looking for a high quality at bat. It'd be great to get Teddy on so the pitcher has to start throwing from the stretch. And that ball bounces in. And that a great at bat from Teddy. What a great at bat from Teddy. High quality at bat from Teddy. So now we'll see him come off the stretch. We'll see if that makes a difference. And a right handed uh, batter now. So Teddy will get the sign. Aaron will. Get the sign, Teddy with a tiny lead. He does not go. Strike across the front of the plate at the knees and dove down. So this pitcher, number eight, just throws at an angle, basically. Uh, if he gets at the right angle, it's a really beautiful fastball. It's almost unhittable if he lets go too early. So Aaron asking for the uh, signs again. Unsure what he was doing there. What a great heads up baseball IQ move. And the pitcher on the rubber, Aaron with the white bat. Swing and a miss. Somebody missed a sign. Somebody missed a sign. Because there's only one out. So you do not want to be running and swinging here. Let bet that you pop out or line out. Could end up with a double, double play there. So I'm not sure what happened. And now with his white pants all the way down over his shoes. That ball is way outside. Teddy with a very late slide. We gotta talk about him not breaking his ankle. Maybe he doesn't realize how he's almost six foot tall, but that's, he can slide much sooner. So Aaron now in the driver's seat. Oh no, he's not in the driver's seat. One ball, two strikes, my bad. I missed them up. So Aaron's gotta be swinging here if it's close. And that one's not. Inside and low. Two balls, two strikes, and one down. Teddy on second, as you can see there in the frame. And Aaron up. In the on-deck circle, we have Ricardo. Teddy with a decent sized lead now as the second baseman keeps creeping away. And that ball is easily gonna allow him to go to third. The question is, does he go home? No play whatsoever. Oops. And we get a timeout as the uh, as the catcher fixes his gear just out of the frame there. So number eight, afflicted with the problem that so many big, tall, strong power pitchers have. The ability just to pump in speed, but the ability to replicate it is tricky. And with a shot back to the pitcher, and Teddy's in there safe. What a heads up play by Teddy with a bat in the way too, he's safe. And that is the lead, on, lead run for the Jackrabbits with a 3-2. So Aaron's gonna go down 
as a ground out to the pitcher, but it was so much more than a ground out to the pitcher, ladies and gentlemen. That was good quality at bat for Aaron. And Ricardo will step in. With the bases empty and two down, and a lot of screaming behind us because it looks like a triple from one of the teams behind us. And Ricardo takes that ball away. So a walk. A stolen base, a pass ball, and then a simple ground out. Puts the Jackrabbits up 3-2 on a well-fought game with Choice Select here. It's going to be up to Ricardo now to restart this inning. Huge hole in right center. Ball away on a 68 mile an hour pitch. So now Ricardo's got to be smart here. I know he's looking to really put a charge into one, really be the first one to hit a home run over the fence here at 275. Very doable for our boys, but he's got to be disciplined. Keep his head down, only swing at, fast, at fastballs over the plate. The ball gets away from number eight, and now it's a 3-0 count. Ricardo will be taking. For those of you planning our afternoon, a win in this game would mean that we would take the next game off and we would be scheduled to start at 2. However, all the games are running late at this point, so it's most likely a 2.15 or a 2.20 start. And Ricardo will take first. I would fully expect Ricardo to be stealing here. And we get a timeout. And Coach coming to talk to number 8 here. The infield didn't come in. So now, what's up, my man? That was great base running. Great base running. You got anything to say to the audience? You say hi, Papa? Hi, Papa. Uh, that's Teddy coming over to get the second of his two Gatorades that his mom packed and his water. Um, so we're going through liquids like crazy. We might need to have a plan B here at the break. And it looks like we'll have a pinch runner for Ricardo. Uh, and is that Isa? Or no, that's um, Isaiah. Isaiah. Pitcher and catcher continuing to chat about uh, whatever a coach told them to do. Probably something around a steal here. But Isaiah is one of the fastest kids, maybe second fastest kid on the team. And already there on first, you can see a little better look. There he is. And Javon up to bat. Javon, remember, had a high quality of bat last time, drawing a walk by just fouling pitches off and then getting on base and scoring one of our three runs. And Isai, or sorry, Isaiah, shoot, Isaiah, 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 Isaiah back safely. I don't know why my brain does that. They're not really the same kid at all. And a crushing ball to left field that drops. We'll see if there's a play at third. Javon with a beautiful single that moves on the hit and run. Isaiah, third. Javon at first, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we are cooking. So Chris up. So this is a crucial at bat here to know whether, uh, or if we can really crack this game wide open. So Chris up. Chris had a really good day yesterday, putting the bat on the ball. Swing and a miss, and a ball down to second. And that ball goes in the outfield. We'll have Isaiah with a huge, huge run on the throw. That was phenomenal base running. That was phenomenal base running. You know, it's frustrating, I think, he'd love to be in the starting lineup. But man, run four there with a runner on second because of a heads up run. As soon as that ball got past second base, he was scoring, so now that's a buck. That's a buck. He was in that. Oh. oh man, he was in the lineup and he stepped towards second. That's a buck. Oh man. Anyway, Javon on second didn't get called. Here comes Chris with a foul ball back. Here we go. And we got two strikes, two outs, and a guy on second.
So chance of, I think it's, I couldn't hear it, but chance of nine something something from the dugout. CR9, CR9, thank you. Swing and a miss to strike three, and that will end the inning, but not before the Jackrabbits win the inning by putting, uh, what do we put, two across for so a 4-2 as we go to the top of the fourth. Teddy will take the mound again, and uh, we will see how this, this goes. Uh, Keith, are you keeping track of time today? Okay, let me go find out what time we started. I think about an hour ago, so I think there's plenty of baseball left uh, in this game. So I'll be right back, folks, to find out what time this game started. So ladies and gentlemen, we started at 10-10. Then we play an hour 45, so that would take us to 11.55. Would be the last available time that we could start an inning. As such, I think this is probably it. We'll see. Uh, we, yesterday we were averaging somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes an inning. So as the top of the fourth goes, this would be the, um, you know, this would be hopefully us. And the, uh, Teddy gets some outs here and then we get up we can run the inning out, but we shall see. This will also be his seventh and final inning of the tournament. So Jack Rabbit's riding Teddy's shoulders uh, to make sure that they get all the way through. Right now set up to be the winning pitcher. And outside of a very shaky first, actually a very shaky first, two thirds of a first, um, Teddy has been in and around the plate with his three pitch mix and been able to get the outs he needs by throwing strikes and trusting his infielders and outfielders to make those plays. So we've got the call for balls in. I see Teddy on the mound. Of course, Kieran still behind the plate for his second inning behind the plate. Uh, we've got Gianni. No, Esai is behind the plate. I apologize. We're going to bring Esai back in to finish out this game. Uh, Gianni at third, of course. Jorge standing on second for the throwdown, but actually is going to play second or shortstop. Uh, Ricardo at second and Joe at first. In right, I believe Isaiah stayed in, looks like. Uh, and then center is Jack and left is Chris. So here we go. This is the inning right here, ladies and gentlemen. Going to have to get the outs through what I think is pretty much the heart of the order for choice select. And that ball's popped up to the right side. And that ball is fair. And that's gonna be a double. Oh, that's Jabrell in, in right. Good retrieval of that from Jabrell. So on a pop up, uh, not anything anybody could do, that ball just falling where we ain't. And a lead off single for choice select. So 37 will step in. Teddy swinging his arm around the most innings that Teddy has pitched in a weekend, partially because all of our Sunday games have been thunder snowed out or strike 54. So you can see the speed coming off a little bit on his fastball. Yeah, so many of our Sunday games have been rained out, thunder snowed out, winded out. Uh, so now first time really we're playing on both days. I think we got one other tournament this year where that was the case. So Teddy's gonna need a chocolate chip cookie and an ice pack for that arm. And the ground ball through the left side. It takes a funky bounce off that lip and Jorge will get it. So Teddy in with two batters and two hits now. So choice select, putting the, uh, putting the aluminum to Teddy's pitches. He's really gonna have to locate his pitches here because they are on to his slightly slower fastball. That ball's hit straight up. Heads, 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 heads. Whoa. Wow. Almost hit one of the spectators on the other, um, other field. 
So many foul balls in this game. There's like a foul ball uh, conga line where people just pass to pass to pass to pass, getting the ball back in. Here comes Teddy with the next pitch. Oh, man, that was a nice pitch. 53 on the inside corner called a ball. Didn't miss by much if it missed. If it missed, it didn't miss by much. Throw it. Oh, no. 54 pass ball. Ah, oh, where was that pitch? Man, I just want an ump to be consistent. That's all I want. Call whatever strike zone you want, just be consistent. First and second. Swing and a miss at a 55 mile an hour pitch there. And a two balls, two strikes. A strikeout here would be huge. We do have the double play in order with a force at third, second, or first, and the infield at double play depth. That ball is 58 and high. Teddy now trying to will those strikes in. If he were an automobile, I think the fuel light would be on at this point, and we would just be guessing how many more miles until the filling station. There it is! There it is! That wasn't a strike, but that's a makeup for the other strike, so we'll take it. Uh, first out on a strike three call. And that foul ball from earlier just returned to the umpire behind the plate. Number two steps in. Teddy now with one down, first and second, giving a cursory glance at second, but not really paying him any attention. And that ball is 56 and high. Number two digging in. Teddy's dad's heart beating a mile a minute. 57 right down Colfax. You gotta be swinging at that, but I'm glad he didn't. So again, double play still in order. Teddy paying no attention behind him. The ball is outside. All right, how much gas is left in the tank for Teddy here? That ball's in the dirt, great stop. Going to third, he's gonna eat it. Gianni with the stop, he, I'm sorry, he didn't eat it, he did throw anyway. So that takes the all important double play out of order or out of commission. So Teddy now is gonna have to come back and get the strike out here. We can't really afford a, a run for an out with the limited lead we have. Teddy will now reset himself. 3-1 count. Number two's been in the box a long time. Let's see what he does. Strike at 56 right at the letters. I think number two was in there a long time and was kind of frozen by the time he finally saw that pitch. Teddy was wise to step off and reset himself. That, was, that pitch was won with the step off. And then it was just executed with the strike across the letters. Full count. Foul ball. Teddy now with a little lackadaisical leg kick that his pop has been texting me about all game. That's where he can generate a little bit of... Uh, you can generate a little bit of power. It looks like Ump is... Esai is taking care of Teddy big time by making sure the ump uh, wipes off the entire plate there. It was covered in dirt. That's the kind of leadership Esai brings to the team. Kind of the little things here in baseball. You know, you just got to make sure the ump can see the entire plate on this all-important 3-2 pitch. And a ground ball wrapped the middle to second. We'll throw it to first, but we will trade a run for an out there. So... Makes my heart pound a little bit stronger. And the runner, the runner in second did go to third. So now the tying run, a mere 80 feet away, a mere pass ball away, if you will. Two down now. And number 10 digs in, Teddy ready to go, coming set quickly. And a bunt foul. Interesting call it a bunt with two outs. Uh, he's really got to make sure he hits that and gets it down the first base line. Otherwise, uh, that ends the inning. So not a bad idea, maybe on a safety squeeze with less than one out or less than two outs, but 
Um, not sure why you do it there. So number 10 did get his bat on it. That was strike one. Ball's outside. 54. So given the uh, strict pitch count and or inning count and things, I think this inning is Teddy's to finish. You don't want to bring Jack in for a third of an inning, which then later on you'd have to use pull him at two thirds of an inning. That ball is high. And no pitch there. Teddy directed to go from the wind up. Swing and a miss at a 59 mile an hour pitch and that's why you go from the wind up. Four mile an hour extra on that fastball. Number 10 couldn't catch up with it. Uh, all important, two balls, two strikes, two out count. Let's see what Teddy brings here. He's in the driver's seat, but he's got to throw a strike. Strike two, there it is. See you later, in the inning, they strand a runner. 80 feet from home, Jack Rabbits continue with the lead, 4-3. A mere 22 minutes left, 23 minutes left in this ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere, but make sure you like and subscribe. Ring that bell. This is great baseball. Let's be honest, folks. Whoever wins this game, this has not been given. This has been earned by everybody. You like to see this kind of 13U baseball. There's not a lot of walks, not a lot of errors. Instead, pitchers pitching, batters hitting and defense is playing defense. So the Jackrabbits need to stretch out this inning 22 minutes in my mind. We have a 4-3 lead, and if we can stretch this thing out 22 minutes, the game's over. Okay, we're so, winning? Yeah, we're winning. So tell your boys that they need to maximize time. So we need to see pitches from the pitcher here. And let's see. Uh, Teddy Papa says, High five, Teddy. Good at bats today and good base running. Well done. Let's get your sleeve. You are done for the weekend. You know that, right? Yeah. Okay. Also, I have water. We can fill up your water bottle, but I don't have any more Gatorade. Do you want to, like, quick hit on the applesauce? Okay. I'm going to put everybody on pause, or I'll mute while I parent. Teddy with the ice pack on his shoulder, his weekend done. So pleased with his pitching though. Only two earned runs in this game uh, on four innings. Uh, he has a chocolate chip cookie in his mouth thanks to his mother. Uh, there's treats for the entire team after the game. Now what the boys need to know is that they have to stretch this thing out. Eastside Jack and Joe will all see the uh, pitcher today and then hopefully if we're gonna stretch this thing out 23 minutes we are going to see a lot more batters roughly three minutes a batter so by my calculations we need to see eight guys up to bat if we're gonna make this thing otherwise we will see Jack in the top of the fifth Isai had a shot through the left side last time and he pops that ball off to the right side and it bounces off the dugout but Isai clearly on it. And let's see if the Jackrabbits are doing some play to win baseball. We've had play to play in the past. I think that was our attitude for most of last season to be perfectly frank. This year, play to win. We've had a couple of comeback victories, play to win. You gotta be wise now. You don't have to come from behind, but you can't, you can't uh, uh, let this game flip over into the top of the fifth. And that ball is low and inside. So again, folks, um, we win this game. We play in two hours, or roughly thereabouts, about two, 215. And that ball's inside. I think had the catcher squeeze that, the ump might have been tempted given his parallelogram of a strike zone, but 
didn't bounce away. Now Isai taking three, uh, taking three pitches here and two balls and one strike to him. Let's see if he can stretch this out, maybe get another half dozen pitches. That ball is high. <laughs> My gun said 90, but it definitely wasn't 90, but it definitely was hard. So probably, again, in the upper 70s there. So at 3-1, Isai absolutely can just pick out the pitch he wants to swing at and just spit on everything else as they go by. And he takes that ball for a strike. Full count now to Isai. That ball is way outside, so Isai will take first. And that is a huge first bat for at bat for us. Not only did it take a few minutes, but Jack uh, now hits with a runner on. Isai will be looking, not the fastest kid on the team, so Isai will be looking for like a pass ball probably. Let's see. Swing and a miss, a 66 of the knees. Jack was uh, swinging for the fences there. He has been feeling it here. I think he really loves that white bat. Chance of Lumberjack. You can probably pick it up on the microphone. Swing and a miss, another 69 at the knees. So Jack now absolutely committed to swinging. Um, I'm not sure that last pitch was a pitch. So Jack's gotta be smart here. Can't, can't take, or can't go down three pitches. And that ball gets away, but does not. Isai is gonna stay at first. If it had been anybody else, I'd be mad. Isai just doesn't have the wheels, and you wanna just keep that runner on. So, so again, prime select, throwing over a bunch, but also probably half the pitches, or half the throw over is getting away from first base. That ball is inside. Jack sells it like, like he's Javon. That was like a Javon move from the left side. Liked it. I liked it. I liked it. And that ball is high and away. Popped the mid at 70. So now Jack forcing extra pitches here. Still 2 2 count. This is the pitcher's count. Jack's going to have to really be close. And he does. He pops that one. Up into center. And he will be out on the catch. And the runner scampers back to first, but you can't be sad about that. He put the bat on the ball. That's two for him, I think two pop outs actually, but putting the ball to the outfield, which for Jack, uh, given how early season struggles existed, that's really good. Joe now checking with the man above as he checks in. Pitcher comes set, and that ball is away. So important that Joe here put the ball in play. We're at 1140, so 15 more minutes before this game can be called on account of time. Joe has a good sense of the strike zone, that's why he bats lead off. Joe now ready, locked in, takes that ball at the brim of the hat, or the helmet for ball three. First baseman letting the pitcher know something may be on here. I mean, it's almost certainly a take from Joe. And he throws that ball low and away, and everybody's gonna move up 80 feet, so you'll see Isai coming to your frame there on the second base. And in the picture in a picture, you'll see Joe take first. Hard hitting Jorge up to bat with one down. And that'll bring Gianni the on deck circle. Teddy will put a helmet on. Beautiful 65 mile an hour pitch right down the middle. Jorge. Looked like he was taken all the way. Hey. 
Jorge now. Looks like his stance is a little wider. Maybe already doing the two-strike approach. Isai scampers back, nobody there. But now he's got the pitcher thinking. So again, most of this game mental. If you can get in the pitcher's head, that's key. That ball skips in, great stop by the catcher. Otherwise, everybody's definitely moving up on that 71 mile an hour ball in the dirt. Let's go, go get warm guys, go get warm. Come on, come on, come on. 23 digs in. I just saw Jack and Kieran going to get warm in case we're needed. Oh, ground ball to second. For a double play to end the inning. And that is unfortunate. We will get, you're up Jack, see ya. So huge momentum turner for Choice Select who only has a one run deficit going to the top of the fifth on that ground ball. I bet Jorge would love to have that one back. There are a lot of screaming and yelling out of first base and I don't blame them. They are an excited team over there with that defensive play. Again, hats off to both teams for playing good baseball. Sometimes you hit them where they are, sometimes you hit them where they ain't. Jack will take the mound. It's currently Currently 4-3 us, top of the fifth, choice select will come up, and then we are, we go until 11.55, so it's 11.42, so 13 minutes, so three outs and no runs and we win, if we give up any runs, we'll bat, and so we'll see how this goes. Yeah, exactly. Who are you guys playing next? Diamond C, Diamond C. Diamond Club, something? Yeah, okay. All right, well, we will probably not be done well anywhere before noon, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, probably so not, yeah. you guys get 12, 15, 12, 20, 12, something like that. Something. Yeah. Well, well, we'll break down quick so you can get your game going. But yeah, for those of you that just care about 13U baseball, Pueblo uh, Premier will be playing Diamond Club on our field next. And Pueblo Premier team we played previously, a good team. Uh, they beat the living dickens out of us. Uh, and I think it was our first term of the year, I uh, went on to place uh, second in that tournament. So uh, this, this tournament, they went one and one yesterday, although they did have to face Eaton, which is probably the, uh, on paper, the best team in this tournament. Eaton is uh, a town committed to baseball. They start early. Uh, they produce, I don't know, I think they're triple, 3A, sorry, not AAA, but 3A high, sc high school. And I think they win um, the state tournament every year or most every year. And this last year, they had one of their pitchers drafted right out of Eaton High uh, in the majors, I believe in um, something like the ninth or 12th round or something. So a pretty high uh, round for a high school pitcher from a 3A school in Colorado, which is considered a cold weather climate. If you happen to watch or care about this, Prep Baseball, uh, they have PBR it's called. Um, they have a nice YouTube channel and they have some podcasts on there. So, and they talk about all the kids that are playing baseball and who are gonna get um, uh, drafted at the high school level, at the prep level. And one of the things that they differentiate clearly are warm weather schools or warm weather climates and cold weather climates. Colorado is classified as a cold weather climate. Uh, and the places like Arizona, Florida, Texas, where you can literally play year round. I mean, your biggest concern in those places is it's too dang hot to play, not too dang cold. Um, so those players sometimes will get upwards of 2,000 extra innings compared to a cold weather climate uh, player. And so that's a big difference that the scouts uh, and colleges have to take into account when they go recruiting is uh, how much better you would be if you had 2,000 extra innings. So Jack in, Isai behind the plate, Joe at first, Ricardo at second, Jorge at short, and Gianni at third. Swing and a miss, it's a 60 mile an hour fastball. It looks like we've got Javon in left. Aaron in right and Chris in center. So the way I think this goes with 10 minutes left on the clock, it is three outs and we win. Three outs and nobody scores and we win. Uh, in the event that we score, uh, or sorry, invent that choice select scores, then uh, we will bat in the bottom of the fifth. So Isai, Isai taking one off the thigh, based upon what he's rubbing there. Um, that's, that's inconvenient for him. Yesterday, he also took an, an additional shot and uh, just an absolute warrior back there. Anybody who decides to be a catcher is the bravest person in my world, because uh, that is such a tough 
place to uh, play. 59 outside. Two balls and one strike. Jack has definitely got to get number 29 here. We're getting to the bottom of the order for choice select. And uh, <clears throat> against Teddy, they didn't do much. Ball is elevated, 59 high. A lot of excitement in the team behind us. I don't know if they just walked them off. No, they didn't just walk them off. But looks like a some exciting thing on the field behind us. I turn to this field, and Jack walks this pitcher. Jack's emotions getting to him. Mouth agape down on the ground, but those balls were high. I mean, there's no there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Those were those pitches were not competitive. So Jack puts the first runner on, the tying runner on. Number four will step in for choice select. So we'll see if Jack does. That ball is inside, apparently. Eastside moved over to block it. There it is. Same pitch, I think. Uh, 59 on the inside corner, but instead of sliding over, Eastside kind of just moved his glove over and grabbed it. 1-1. One, one. Runner on first, not going anywhere. Foul ball straight back. <laughs> I, uh, I have no idea what's happening behind us, but I'm guessing it come from behind victory the, the, with the jazz, that, uh, the excitement and the, and the uh, yelling and screaming that we're getting from the, uh, it looks like the clutch is across their chest. But back to this game. That ball is outside. And that ball is thrown just too far to the third base side to be competitive. So the runner takes second. So now a choice select runner on second and in scoring position with no down and Jack now with a 2-2 count so he's still in the driver's seat against number four here but uh, certainly not where we want to be that ball is elevated Jack has, Jack has struggled uh, to keep his emotions under control from the mound which has led him to getting uh, yanked. Got him! Double play! Double play! I, okay, so it was a line drive, right shot to uh, uh, first baseman Joe, who was perfectly positioned, who then whipped over to Jorge. Jorge, knowing exactly what to do, gets the gut runner who had taken his big old secondary lead. And huge, huge, huge wins. There we go, good heads up play by Jorge to know what to do. And for Joe to know as soon as that ball was in his glove to whip it to second. Ladies and gentlemen, that might be a sign that the baseball gods are with us. We shall see two down, bases empty, Jack swinging and a miss to number nine. So lefty on lefty. Let's see if Jack is gonna bring, he has a little bit of a cutter, kind of a, a slider cutter, I don't know how to describe it, but it's gonna go a, down and away from a left-handed batter. He doesn't get to use it very much, 61 and high. So everything, just simple play, ground ball to first. And that would be pretty close. We're at 11.50. So Jack absolutely needs to get this batter here. Swing and a miss at 61. Because I see number one, the leadoff hitter, top of the order in the on-deck circle. So this is the batter to get. Do not want to see choice select flip the lineup over again. But man, when is the last time we saw two double plays in a game? One really well put off by Hit straight up on the other field, looks like. And we're gonna get a timeout on that one. So, but yeah, great. Four, six, three double play by Choice Select to end the, the bottom of the last inning. And then a heads up one, six uh, double play here to get the first two outs of this inning. Jack with a 1-2 count now to this lefty. Let's see if we don't see that sort of slider cutter. Foul ball, great swing by the lefty to stay alive on the 60 mile an hour fastball up and around the letters. Man, I wanna see. That's Jack calling for his catcher to come out. He's thinking too much. 
thinking jack is is a thinking jack a, a strike throwing jack i don't know let's find out much noise from the first base to dugout. What great team spirit choice select has. Strike three on a beautiful 52 mile an hour cutter. Oh, that was so pretty. And that, my friends, should end the game. I think they're gonna call it. So there is technically four minutes left, uh, but choice select is asking if the time's up or what's going on. So we shall see. Our boys assembling, choice select not. Uh, so we shall see. So the field of the uh, crew chief saying they're home and we're going to bet. And that is game. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, what a phenomenal game by both teams. Eddie. Yes. Jack with that beautiful curve. <laughs> I, let's not have him call the catcher out next time, but a beautiful curve or whatever that is. So our boys coming across for a high five. I want to just props to Choice Select for a really well fought game. Uh, you know, we, uh, uh, we were pushed to the limit there all the way to the very end of the fifth and uh, or sorry top of the fifth and with that we will end ladies and gentlemen we'll be back scheduled for two there's no way we will be on at two but make sure you like subscribe and hit that bell make sure that you talk to your grown-up who is going to uh let the uh let you know via text or the baseball app the team reach app what time we're playing but most likely 220 or thereabouts thank you very much and on behalf of keith and myself and the jack rabbits broadcasting team that was an excellent Excellent game. Well done, Choice Select. We will see you again, undoubtedly. And thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. On behalf of Jackrabbits Broadcasting, vamos libres, and we are done. <laughs>